So you know when you have this really great idea and it turns out to be a lot harder than you thought? Nothing kills inspiration quicker for me. I bought my first 360 camera after years of wanting one because a client asked if it was something I could do. Of course, I said yes and immediately bought one. Honestly, the learning curve on these is so minimal, but I was used to 2D workflows. It can be so frustrating when you have to dig out the information and find a whole new process. <sighs> that was why I filmed this series early last year. I get into these obsessive phases where I do all of this research and I have to do something with this new information. So I filmed it. Today's episode is all about using GoPro's program, Fusion Studio, for ingesting and then exporting files into Premiere. If you use their 360 cameras, then this will be a great overview of how their program works. If you don't, it'll still be a great overview of how 360 workflows go. All right, let's get to it. So let's get right into editing in 360. Now I'm gonna start because I'm using the Fusion 360 with getting into GoPro's program first. So what I do is I'm gonna be plugging into the USB-C right here. So what I can actually do is just go ahead and power this up and plug that in to the Fusion there. Since this USB-C is running power off of the computer with it, I can actually take the battery out, which is gonna keep it from overheating because these overheat in like an hour or something. And what you see is that it's connected and it's showing you that it's connected right there, okay? All right, so we're plugged in and you can actually have it set up to pull Fusion Studio up right away or like me, you can just go in and click on it and it'll pull it right up. When it does come up, what you wanna do is actually go in and browse camera media. Now, the reason I go about it this way is I like to use the USB-C connection to do all the processing and handle the, the connection there instead of having to bring all the clips over. It's kind of a complicated series of folders um, that you have to make sure all of it gets into your hard drive or whatever, which takes time, etc. So instead, what I do is I take all of the, um, all the clips that I'm gonna be using straight off of the 360, do all the stitching inside of Fusion Studio, and then export that onto my hard drive. Then I can take those files, bring them into Premiere, and handle everything from there. So it's got my clips pulled up right here. Um, this is from an event that I recently did um, right here at uh, a car dealership nearby. Um, we do some commercials for them. So, um, I've got a few clips that I could actually go in and I can, you can see, you can kind of adjust your horizon line here. You can adjust um, through the yaw where your uh, starting position is gonna be. So, you know, whatever your main focus point would be, that's where I'd recommend beginning. Whatever you want somebody to see first and catch their attention before they start moving around afterwards. Um, within here, you can also go into over capture instead. So this is your over capture. Um, you can widen your field of view and then you can even punch in and you can make your adjustments from there. Uh, that would be more of a 2D file than it would a 360. So we're gonna stay in 360 though. Um, next thing that I like to do is I'm gonna go over to settings. I'm gonna make sure that I'm capturing this in flat. Uh, so a little bit more like a log-ish profile, something that you can do some color manipulation with afterward. You have a little more room to play with, uh, a little bit more dynamic range in it. So once you have that set, then you can go ahead and say, okay, add to the render queue. This is where you're gonna set your render settings. So if you say, I'm gonna continue editing, then you're gonna go into editing. If you wanna go straight to Facebook or YouTube or Vimeo, you have those options. And then obviously your media resolution, 5.2K all the way down to 2K and your audio options. So either just 
playing stereo or if you wanted to stay with the 360 audio because the GoPro Fusion does capture it, which is pretty awesome, you can go with 360 audio. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and stay with 360 audio. I'm gonna go with 4K, um, just because I'm not gonna be punching into any of this. I'm gonna be delivering in 4K in the long run anyways. There's really no reason for me to go 5.2K. If I were editing on a 2D timeline, then I would go with that little extra push that I have to use to get in. I can get a little more resolution out of it um, and I could play with it a little bit better from there. Again, for now, 4K. So create the render queue and then what you have is a render queue that pulls up on your top right tab here. So you can always go right back into here and you can make sure that you've got your next setting. You can clip your in and out on your timeline. So let's say that you wanted to um, make sure that you're not in it, right? For instance, here I am, boop, right there. Um, instead, I want to be, I want this to start with me not in it because frankly, it takes a really long time for these to export. So you want to trim it down as best as possible. So I always go in and make sure at the very least, the start and finish don't have me in it if that's what I'm going for. All right, so um, I make sure that's set. You can set your horizon if you want. There's always a chance to change that in Premiere later. So don't like be stressed about trying to get to it right away. Um, and then, you know, I, I kind of sometimes do like to make sure that um, at least my starting point is where I'd like it to be. Again, you can change that later. Kind of it's up to you how much you want to do right now versus later. At the very least, I'm going to make sure that it's set to flat. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and do the flat. I'm going to add that to the render queue. And I would just go through and I would make sure everything is set the same here before I went into my render queue and started my render. Okay, so once you're in your render queue, let's say you've got these two clips that you want to do here. Um, what you're going to do is you can either one at a time or um, both together start your selections, select your clips and start your render. There are more settings here though. You can change the name. You can go in and change your codec format. So you've got your H.264, Cineform 422 High or ProRes 422 from some pretty good codecs there. Depends on what you're using it for. Um, you know, if you really want it to be, you know, quick and easy and low, um, take up a lot of uh, not a lot of space, take up as little space as possible, then you're going to be looking at H.264. If you want to retain some of that information, get into a 422 color space, obviously then you're going to go into the Cineform or ProRes, uh, but you're going to exponentially increase your file sizes from there. So keep that in mind. Uh, Premiere has kind of some issues with um, handling that pretty well right now, but uh, you're going to get more out of it in the long run if you're doing some more professional stuff. Uh, if you're going to Facebook, it's all 720p. It's super compressed. Honestly, you're not going to get much out of it. So at that point, you may want to stick with H.264. Um, then you, know, you can change your video's resolution, your resolution again. You can change your audio again. Um, and it's got the parallax compensation as well. That brings me back to one more thing. So inside of your um, your horizon editing options here, you can actually set your stabilization. What that means is that you can either um, go for uh, none at all. You can go for just an anti-shake stabilization, which means that if you're, for instance, running around with this thing, like you can see it's on uh, this nice little pole here, you can take it in the water with you. You can um, you know, take it, I've seen people put it on bikes and go for bike rides. Um, if you're moving around, all it's gonna do as you move is just make sure that the shake is removed from that. Now, if you go into full stabilization, it's actually gonna set a center point that it will never turn from. So let's say you were holding this by the grip and you were to do a full 360 move yourself. The camera, um, the output center point of your 360 world will never change. You would be rotated around your space. Um, so I think that's how that works. I'll find out later on if that's wrong or not. So back to renders. Once you have your settings all figured out, you know that you're gonna do H.264, 4K, 360 audio. The last thing you wanna do is make sure that you know where you are exporting these two. So you actually, it's kind of goofy, but you have to go into preferences inside of Fusion Studio, and then you can set your import and export locations from there. So just make sure that you update that with whatever folder you'd like these to go to. I put these onto the hard drive into a specific folder that I'm using for that project. So uh, make sure that you get that set before you go, and then you hit render selected. From there, we're going to move into Premiere and we're going to take a look at how to bring these into Premiere, how to edit, and what you can do with it. Hmm, I could just listen to him all day. What is wrong with you? Get it together. Did that help? If so, give this video a like and leave a comment saying what problem this solved for you. Did I miss anything? 
Let me know in the comments. I may not have all the answers, but Google does. Why would they listen to you if they could Google it? Remember, if you wanna keep up with what I'm doing here, subscribe and hit that notifications bell. Next week's episode, we'll finish up this series on making 360 videos. So you may wanna come back for that. Maybe. Power it up and, and it should operate just fine. Of course it wouldn't right now. Oh, I know what I did wrong.